What's up guys, Tyler from Intern Anglers here. Hope you guys are doing well and staying as healthy as you can as we're all out here doing our best to social distance and shelter in place. Um, we're going to come at you with another fly tying video. Hopefully you guys aren't going too crazy with the cabin fever quite yet. Um, so this is Mercer's Swing Nymph. Super effective little soft tackle pattern. Uh, I tied anywhere from you know as small as a 20 up to a 14. A little tungsten bead on the hook here. We're going to start with some red thread, and I like to start at about that, you know, 80% point or so. We're going to need plenty of space up in the front of the fly to kind of finish everything up, so don't want to get too, too terribly close to our hook eye here. So we'll go ahead and advance our thread back and tie in some pheasant tail colored um, micro tubing. Essentially, I mean, pheasant. it says pheasant tail. Essentially, it's a red. Uh, this red variation is, is by far my favorite. Uh, I tie one, you know, most like the smaller ones that I tie that I'm going for more of like a, a midge look to. I'll tie in kind of a translucent, um, like a yellow or primrose, sometimes a, a white. I do real well with those in a smaller size, but this red is typically what I what I tie in in my you know 18, 16s, 14s. Back that thread up a little bit. So once we've got that uh, micro tubing tied down nice and tight, we're going to tie in some Opal Mirage tinsel in small. Uh, you could also use like a Vivis Pearl tinsel. As long as, as long as the size is small, I think you'll be in good shape. Just want to add a little bit of flash to the back of this fly. So we'll capture that right back there where we captured our tubing. And just advance our thread back up. And if you need to kind of smooth your body up, mine's not exceptionally smooth here. I'm just going to take some some thread wraps to kind of fill in any of those gaps from where I tied that stuff in in the back and then I'll bring my thread back up to about that 80 percent point and I'm going to advance this uh, tubing up my body with just nice tight touching wraps We don't need to come all the way up. That's uh, that's plenty for our little red butt here. And then I'll throw some nice tight wraps to just capture that tubing, clip out any excess you might have. And then I'm going to come in and counter wrap that um, Opal Mirage tinsel. And just kind of, you know, open wraps on this stuff. We just want to put a little bit of flash over that red. And we can capture that. All right. Now... Traditionally, um, you know, we're using like a dark done uh, Antron for this next step. I'm going to use some done CDC instead. I just like the movement of the CDC a little bit better. So I'm just going to strip one half of that CDC feather. And if you've got some shorter fibers, you can go ahead and pick them out. I don't need a lot, I just want to, just a couple of them. And I'm going to take that and kind of size it up just a little bit longer than my hook shank there, or than my hook there, and lay that CDC in. You can clip out these butts. Oh, a little straggler there.
and we'll bring our thread back to where that tubing ends. And we're not exceptionally straight there. I'm just going to trim that up so we're kind of even-ish. See if that doesn't. Hard to pick up that CDC with my shirt color. wasn't the best choice. <laughs> So next step, we're just going to take a little bit of just one strand of peacock curl. And I know I've probably said this before, I don't love using peacock curl. It's just not the most uh, durable material out there. But it does look really good. So and it's on certain flies, I'll, uh, I'll make an exception. Let's bind that thread up just a touch. And I'm just going to fill this little thread gap that I, or this little thread uh, hump or whatever up with this peacock just about like that don't need too much of it there's some nice tight wraps and it's a little uh a little open, not a big deal. I don't mind that too much because our next step is to go ahead and push that tungsten bead back over top of that peacock and advance our thread up in front. Then we can really use that thread to kind of push our tungsten bead back on our peacock there. And we're looking for something about like so. Now we'll take just a touch of, uh, you could use ice dubbing, I'm just using an, uh, like a SLF, uh, black, kind of more of a dun, like if you're using ice dubbing it's more of a, like we call it UV dun or something like that. Uh, but I don't need a lot of this stuff, just a little bit of flash underneath our soft hackle. So I'll build my noodle and I'm going to kind of hop over that bead back to the peacock once and then, oop. A little loose there. Let's touch that up. Back to the peacock once and then a couple wraps right there by the eye. And we're getting a little tight so I can kind of just take my my finger back there and give myself some space. Now our final step is our soft hackle, and again this is a soft hackle pattern, but I don't, you know, I fish it uh, in a, you know, a nymph rig underneath an indicator, uh, dead drifted as well, and, and have quite a bit of success. Find a good feather here. And for the soft hackle, we're going to use partridge. Uh, partridge is probably <coughs> my m what I'm using the most. Uh, with soft hackles, partridge or starling. Just a nice variegation. Uh, not the most brittle stem out there. But we'll take our partridge feather here. And I'm just going to prep it by kind of wisping those, a lot of those fibers rearward. And giving myself a little tie in point. We'll go ahead and tie that bad boy in right there behind the eye of the hook and kind of advance our thread backward just enough to give us some space to build that soft hackle. Then we can clip out the tip of that feather nice and tight. Maybe. There we go. And then I'll take my trusty hackle pliers here and get a hold of this feather. And I'm just going to take a couple of wraps with this. We don't need to get super heavy handed with the soft hackle, maybe two or three wraps. And then we'll throw a nice wrap in right behind the eye to capture it. 
clip out our stem. We've got a little bit of a, a mess here, but super easy fix. We're just going to take all these fibers back just kind of with our thumb and index finger and train them rearward. And then I'll hold them back just kind of lightly as I'm building a little head on this fly. Now I can go ahead, I've got a straggler that I'll cut out here in just a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and throw a nice whip finish in. And one more. Clip out that thread. And then you guys can kind of see that little blunt straggler. <clears throat> Clip that one out as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is our Mercer's Swing Nymph. Uh, this one's on the large side. You know, this this one right here is a 14, so about as big as I'd tie this. Um, but super, super effective little bug to swing. Uh, you know, if you're if you're just going to dead drift it, throwing it kind of in the middle of your rig. Uh, as kind of more of an attractor fly, I think is also super effective on the dead drift, but not a uh, not a terribly difficult tie and really fun to fish. So if you guys need the material for these, we are still doing online orders. So give me a call or uh, reach out to us on our website, and we can get stuff picked and shipped out to you that day. Doing free shipping on orders orders over twenty bucks, and I uh, hope you guys are out there staying safe. Hope you're still fishing as much as you can, and we'll see y'all soon.